I have owned my Steam Deck for over nine months now, and I think it's finally time to give my official thoughts on it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And if I think it's still worth buying in 2023, instead of going over all the specs and benchmarks, I'm going to guide this review as more of a day-to-day -day experience of using it heavily for nine months. This Steam Deck has been out now for over a year, but it was such a popular release that they had to slowly release products to consumers over the course of a year. Luckily now you can just buy one without any kind of wait. I was a bit skeptical of the Steam Deck at first, not because I didn't like the idea, but Valve has a reputation of creating really innovative hardware that inevitably flops because it didn't hit a wide enough audience. The Steam Machines? It's a flop. Steam Link? Flop. Steam Controller? Ooh, big flop. Looking at the Steam Deck, it feels like they finally understand how to hit that wider audience and give them something that could fit easily into their current demographic of gamers. The Steam Deck comes in three variants, but the internal hardware is the same on all three. The only difference between them is the storage size and speed, and the most expensive variant comes with an anti-glare etched glass screen. The cheapest version is what we will be reviewing today, and that cost me $399. US It should be said if you are going to buy the 64 gig variant like I did, Please be ready to either buy an SD card or an SSD replacement. 64 gigs is nothing, honestly. From a consumer standpoint, I think it's kind of silly to sell a handheld gaming PC with only 64 gigs of storage. You will 100% need more storage, but 399 is a super aggressive price point that nobody else can even come close to. So while I wish the base model started at 256, I understand why they didn't, and it's hard to compare the Steam Deck to anything else as there's literally nothing that compares to it in the price range. $399 is an amazing price for what you get here. Yes, you can build a used gaming PC for $400 and you'll have a good time, but if you go that route, you'd have no portability, no battery, no screen, no controller, and no warranty or support. As far as budget computers go, I really think a Steam Deck is as good as it gets for $400. SteamOS, which is the Linux operating system that comes pre-installed on the Steam Deck, just kind of works. Out of the box, you are able to get into Steam and navigate it with ease. And even desktop mode just feels like a normal Linux desktop. I did a video a few months ago where I replaced my PC with a Steam Deck entirely as a challenge. You can check that out here. Since then, I found myself using my other computers as just computers and sticking to gaming on my Steam Deck. But if I didn't have another laptop or a desktop or anything, I would be totally fine with using my Steam Deck as my only computer. For schoolwork, gaming, LAN parties, just surfing the web, it all works just fine. In your hands, the Steam Deck feels Gen 1. It's kind of big and clunky. It's hard to describe to people who haven't felt it in their hands before, but compare it to the Gen 1 Nintendo DS. That thing was very cool when it came out, but then the DS Lite came out, everyone was like, how did we ever use the first one? And that's how I feel like we we're gonna feel when a Steam Deck 2 is released. A more streamlined, lighter version should definitely be in the works. Does the feel of the machine get in the way of gaming? No, not really. And once you're entranced by a game, you start to forget that clunkiness and just enjoy the game. So it's not enough to impede me, but after using better feeling handhelds like a Switch Lite or an Aya Neo, it just makes the Steam Deck feel like a big iron giant in your hands compared to a sleek, properly sized handheld. As someone who doesn't have child-sized hands, I'm finally happy that a handheld has come out that is not designed for six-year-olds. Have you tried using like a, a 3DS or other smaller handhelds? I get hand cramps constantly on them, but on the Steam Deck I don't experience that. It could be due to the size or the ergonomics of the grip, but I am able to game longer without feeling any kind of discomfort. Although when I play in bed on my back, the device is so heavy that sometimes my left hand does start to go a little numb after a while. So while I like that it's big for my hands, its size is a bane for portability. When I bought the Steam Deck, I didn't expect to be able to shove it in my pocket like a PS Vita or a 3DS. But the Steam Deck is so strangely shaped and large that I don't feel comfortable just sticking it in my bag without its case. I have this mini sling bag I wear when I don't want to bring my everyday bag with me, and the Steam Deck literally barely fits in it. It's not anywhere close to being as heavy as like a gaming laptop, so I'm happy either way. I just hope that the next Steam Deck gets that footprint down just a little bit. The screen on the deck is not 1080p resolution, and at that 7-inch screen size, I'm okay with that. You probably can't see a difference at this size anyway, and it helps the games run better, but I really wish we had an OLED screen like the PS Vita. The Vita came out in 2012, and it had this bright and beautiful OLED display, and while the Steam Deck screen isn't the worst thing ever, colors on it do feel a bit muted and unsaturated at times, which makes brown and gray games like Elden Ring feel more brown and gray, but makes colorful games like Sonic or other indie titles just kind of not have that same pop that you'd see on higher quality screens. The fan on the Steam Deck can get a little loud. Check this out. If you wear headphones, you probably will never notice, but if you're playing a AAA game, 
That single 40 mm fan is going to be working overtime to make sure the device doesn't get too hot in your hands. I'd say the fan is not loud or erratic enough to wake up someone sleeping next to you, but it can be a little distracting if you are playing a single player narrative experience and trying to get engrossed in a cutscene or something. Otherwise, it's not that big a deal. I can say that there is never a time where I feel discomfort in my hands because the Steam Deck is too hot, and that's a big win. The battery life on the deck is as good as I expected. If you play AAA games on full blast, you will probably only get from 2 to 2.5 hours, but on a recent 4 hour flight from Seattle to Texas, I was able to play smaller games like Risk of Rain 2 and Vampire Survivors the entire flight with some battery to spare at the end. Luckily the deck charges using a simple USB-C cable, so any power bank is able to keep you charged up. Valve also confirmed recently that the deck has battery bypass. So when you're at home, you should be able to plug your Steam Deck into the wall directly, and once it's fully charged, you will start playing from the wall power directly, leading to better performance and helps keep your battery healthy for longer. The Steam Deck does have some compatibility issues, where some games just straight up don't work, or you have to do weird workarounds to get them working. But I can say most games I want to play work just fine on the Steam Deck, especially any super popular ones you can think of, they generally all will work in one form or another. I use Xbox Game Pass, Battle.net, Epic Games Launcher, and they all work just fine after a little setup. And that's what I love the most about the Steam Deck. You aren't shoehorned into some BS operating system. This is literally just a Linux or Windows if you go that route, and you're able to install emulators, game launchers, and all kinds of Linux software. And while some of this is technically possible on other handhelds like the Nintendo Switch, the Switch devs generally don't want you to do any of that, and they'll actively try to stop you and push firmware updates that break your device. But Valve doesn't care, and they would never do that. They have said that this device is your own. Do with it what you will, just like you would with your own PC. I love that kind of freedom and flexibility in my gaming devices. I also love that Steam has paired with iFixit to create guides and sell spare parts, so you can repair your device if you need to without going through them at all. It's awesome to see that Valve is on the consumer side when it comes to right to repair. So after nine months of ownership, can I recommend the Steam Deck to buy in 2023? Absolutely. For $400, I'd say the Steam Deck could fit into most people's lives amazingly. I will say, the more computers you own, the less likely you will utilize the Steam Deck to its full potential. So if you already have a desktop PC, and a gaming laptop, and a Nintendo Switch, and a bunch of other things, think about how you will use the Steam Deck before purchasing. Don't just buy it so it can sit in a drawer forever. I waited a whole year and now my Steam Deck is finally here. <sighs> Okay. For me, I use it when I'm traveling, when I'm waiting for appointments, if I'm at home in the living room or my bed, and when I'm going somewhere to play games, but I don't want to bring an entire desktop with me. So for me, the Steam Deck has been amazing, and I'm super happy I bought it. I look forward to whatever improvements Valve makes in the future, because as much as I love it, it's easy to see that this is a very 1.0 feeling device. It could easily be improved with some small updates. Are you planning to buy a Steam Deck after watching this review, or do you already own one? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're thinking. I'd love to talk with you guys in the comments. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching. Get subscribed.